literally a list of a thousand names that I forget how they even got in contact with these folks but they said you know if you can get one out of a hundred like you're gonna do really really good and uh, that was pretty much how I got started was just calling up people and a lot of times they told me to go fly a kite and uh, other times I couldn't believe it they'd be like um, yeah sure we'll set an appointment and I was just like really like <laughs> and open up their own account Robinhood is free nowadays I mean, there's a lot of cool different platforms out there to get the products you need. People just don't know what to do with them. So they need some advice. So in my opinion, I feel like the, the uh, industry is really shifting from a product I sell you to you can already get the product on your own, but let me teach you how to use it to the best of your ability. So I wanted to shift from being a product pushing uh, company to an advice pushing company and uh, that was a really big concern and I think I did kind of uh, stumble on my words and I wasn't super confident um, but now I'm just so fired up about this stuff I come into their place I'm kicking the door down and can you imagine if your doctor's like is, is it okay maybe if like I take your blood pressure, take your blood pressure? <laughs> like uh, yeah and you're like I don't know, is this gonna hurt? <laughs> like, and so now I'm just like, no, we are getting straight to the core of this. And I also, like, I'm just really, I've, I've learned to really ask the curious questions, like, and, and a lot of times those are the hard questions. Like, um, also too, you know, would you want an advisor? Like, I've had clients say that they've buried financial advisors, you know, like if they're in their 60s, like we started with a guy who was in their 60s, now he's no longer with us. Like, do you want an advisor who's going to be in their prime while you're in retirement? Or do you want to start shopping when you're halfway through your, your retirement plan? Um, so I try to leverage it to the best of my ability that I'm going to be here for you for the long haul. Um, and I think if you really do show confidence and competency, uh, that really shines through. That's a great question, and I don't know if there's really a right or wrong answer. Like, I, I, want, I don't want to, like, get people in here too fired up about starting your own practice and, like, you know, how cool it is, like, start up and stuff like that. Like, entrepreneurship is really just, like, at least for me, the first year, like, sadness in a bedroom by yourself. Just, like, wondering, why did I do this? Like, this, I'm going to let my mom down. Um, but that's not to say that's better or worse because... There's some amazing RIAs out there that are doing such good work, and they have in-house CPAs and in-house attorneys, and you know, awesome starting salaries. My salary starting out was zero dollars, and it was very, very difficult. Amorous. So I, there's a lot of positives and negatives to both. For me, I just can't help but see the long term, the the, the long vision of this thing um, and I want to be able to be in control of it and just just kind of uh, create my own destiny there a lot of time and, and effort but for me it was a passion project so I was I was happy to do it yep right um, man I wish I had the you know the the silver bullet answer but it is it's ugly you know the, I am the marketer as well so that's the that's the double-edged sword of starting your own firm. You can't focus just on becoming a competent advisor and you have to be focusing on growing the business too. Because you can be the best financial advisor in the world, but if you don't have anyone to help, what good are you doing? I do try to uh, at least make it known of, of the things that I'm doing out there because otherwise no one's going to tell your story for you. So you kind of do have to be a little bit weird about the stuff and you know ask to, to take a picture and ask to record things and and to get on social media I'm not really the type of person to take pictures of my food like that's never been me um, if you guys are then you're gonna be way better at this than I am so I really had to force myself to to get out there and you know I was so worried about making a tweet or, or making a writing an article that it wasn't perfect nobody cares quite honestly they want it to be raw authentic, authentic yeah. exactly so um, well read. Um, probably being empathetic with clients. 
So I think that uh, it's, it's a huge uh, misunderstanding that clients uh, really want to know what you know. And I really feel that clients care more about knowing that you care than necessarily what you know. So if you can have that heart to heart with the client or you can um, just have those difficult conversations and tell them, look, like, what's the conversation we should have? What's your biggest fear? I'm getting goosebumps. Like, what's, what, what makes you nervous, man? Like, they re then they're really opened up. And now, the, and now, I mean, I've just felt it and sensed it. And now they reach out to me with way different issues um, that are way more important. And those are the relationship. But being empathetic with people, I think, is probably the most underrated skill in, in this industry. It really is an art more than a science. So go out and get your you know, CFP and things like that. Like That's just the baseline. But having those emotional connections with clients is probably the most important podcast. And you'll hear some of these really cool firms that are out here just doing awesome work. I would just read their blogs, comment on them, try to befriend people in these businesses that are doing really cool stuff and be like, how do I get a job? Like, can I clean the floor there? Like, what can I do to, to get into that practice? Because um, there's, I probably wouldn't have even started my own firm if I could have gotten into like Steve Lockshin's advice period out in LA. Like, they are doing such cool work. Okay, so what about, um, I, I get this question asked a lot. What about MBA, CFP, CFA? So, uh, yeah, if we're talking this industry, financial planner, you know, whether you're a large firm or small firm, CFP is, is going to become the, the bare, that's going to be, in my opinion, the bare minimum. Um, I think the amount of uh, advocacy that's going out there and how they're really trying to preach about the fiduciary rules and how that's incorporated into the certified financial planning designation, that's going to become like your CPA. Like, you don't go to a tax guy unless they're a CPA. I, I feel that you're not going to go to a financial planner or an investment advisor unless they're a CF or a C, CFP. So I think that's probably the, the first place I would look. It's, I think if you really wanted to be behind the scenes and nerd out on that stuff and you want to be a CFA, I think you're going to have to get into the tech space and, and, and kind of marry those two. Yeah, CFP is, is really kind of the, uh, that's, that's going to become almost like the undergrad, I, I feel like, of yeah. financial planning. Zach, do you have a question? Yeah, so you, no one wakes up in a cold sweat in the middle of the night and says, I got to get me a comprehensive long-term financial plan. So, so no one's at the door like this, please open up. Yeah, where's the financial plan? Yeah. Usually they come to me with like, hey, uh, how do I manage my 401k? Great question. Awesome. So usually I'll try to, uh, to, to back into that question and say, you know, what, well, what's, what's kind of the goal of this money? You know, what, what are we hoping to do with it? Oh, it's for long-term wealth building. Okay, awesome. Long-term wealth building. Why we want to do that? Well, so I can retire someday. Duh. Okay, sweet. When do you want to retire? Oh, I don't know. Okay, well, well tell me this. If we manage your 401k correctly, and let's say that we are able to con you know, stick with the market returns and, and all that stuff, if you're not on track to retire, what's kind of the point? You know, wouldn't you say that we still failed even if we did a good job managing the assets? You know, they want to retire at 55 and travel the world. Like, let's go to Fiji and surf. Well, that's what I want to do. I want to golf. I don't know. I don't want to beat the market. That's so arbitrary. So that's, that's usually how we're – take a small question like that and then back it into the real problem or the real question that they're asking. Well, awesome. Well, thank you. Hey, thank you, guys. Appreciate you all. Thank you, Steve, for having yeah. me, man. If anyone has any questions, feel free to come on up and...